Good evening, I'm Andrew Lawson. I'm the MD of uh, MBD Energy. We're a company using algae at, uh, at power stations and other large emitters to, uh, to use uh, CO2 as a, uh, as a positive feedstock. And uh, uh, it's great to uh, be here tonight to talk about uh, the, the opportunities with, with algae and um, with natural forms of sequestration. I'll also talk a bit about the, uh, the wide range of uh, other biological and natural uh, options we've got for carbon abatement and uh, we're looking at using carbon as a, uh, as a, a key feedstock for uh, in growing uh, oils and, uh, and feed for uh, cattle and um, we're, uh, we're happy to be here tonight to talk about those things. Well I think, I think there's an enormous need. I think Australia has um, abundant natural resources but at, at some stage those resources we need to uh, to look at getting the, the maximum value out of them. Uh, the algae use the sun to, uh, to add uh, energy to um, the carbon that's in the emissions, the CO2. Uh, it takes all of the emissions and, um, and can produce fuels, it can produce oils that are pharmaceutical, omega-3s, omega-6s. Uh, a whole range of very useful oils and offset the requirement to actually mine and import, import oils. The, uh, the remainder of the algae is, um, is the husk. It's 50 to 70 percent protein and very useful for cattle feeds and a whole range of other things such as bioplastics and, uh, and, and other useful elements. So we use 100 percent of the, the, the algae. It's, it grows on the waste from a power station and really uh, it's a great opportunity. Australia's very uh, uh, well situated in that each of the big emitters sit outside the towns and with large buffer land and we can use that buffer land so we don't, don't use any farmland and other useful land, we can use the buffer land to, to grow it uh, and offset the, the large quantities of diesel, every litre of diesel that comes into the country is, is imported. Um, all that we import a billion dollars worth of uh, soy meal a year. These are the two markets that are, that are very straightforward and easy. We've then got the large pharmaceutical and, uh, and uh, high value chemicals that can be grown off different strains of algae. So we're using nature and uh, trying to come up with a good solution. Uh, it's been happening for the last five years. We, um, we've been uh, working away up with James Cook University for the last three years to, um, to uh, build a very large research and development centre. We, we started with a 200 square metre area. We've expanded that to 5,000 square metres, so it's the largest, uh, one of the largest in the world, certainly the largest in Australia. It, um, this year is the first year that we actually emerged from the, uh, from the uh, R&D facility at Townsville to the three largest power stations on the eastern seaboard, one in each of the, the three states, and these projects will uh, or really make a, a big step forward to, to scale um, and as, as the, uh, the next few years unfold we just scale out to uh, very considerable size. I, I, uh, I was very, um, very taken by the, uh, uh, the notion that, um, that science uh, is actually bringing, bringing science to uh, the people and I think that it's, uh, it's very important that, um, that having uh, these sorts of opportunities to actually tell, uh, tell the, the public and people who are interested in these sorts of projects really what's happening and what's happening in the wider context. And so um, I thought it was a good opportunity and I, I, I really like the approach of free science and I think it's a, a critically important thing. Um, uh, we, we have a, a whole range of scientists involved in, in the project and I think that uh, their story deserves to be so told and so really all I'm doing tonight is trying to give some information to people and hopefully it's of interest.